So what happens when there is a change of state? So here we had frozen water and that could melt and we would end up with liquid water and that could evaporate or boil and produce gaseous water vapour. But what kind of change is actually going on? Well, with all three of these, it is a physical change that is occurring, not a chemical one. It means that when ice turns into liquid water, it's still the same chemical. It has not turned into anything else. And so that's why we call it a physical change. Its physical properties have changed, but it's still the same thing. And this reaction is reversible. You could go from solid to liquid by melting, and you could go from liquid to solid by freezing. Now I want to demonstrate something to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to melt something. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need something to melt. So I'm going to crack out some ice. In it goes, a bit more, a little bit more. This looks good to me. A bit more? No, no, let's not be greedy. I'm going to put some on the floor. Let's get dead in there. Yes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it with a Bunsen burner. But what I want to do is I don't want any of the water to escape. It's going to melt and turn into liquid water, and then some of it is going to become a gas, which is going to escape into the atmosphere, but I don't want it to escape. So I basically want to put a lid on it so that none of the actual water molecules can go anywhere else. And what I want to show you is that it is, um, well, it's interesting, let me show you. If I put a lid on it, what would happen is the pressure would build up. Because the gas can take up such a larger space than the liquid, then what's going to happen if I put a lid on it is it's going to explode. It's why you always have to pierce the film when you put food in the microwave. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a little shower cap to, the, uh, to my beaker. I'm going to do it with sellotape. And what's going to happen is the shower cap to start with is going to be deflated. And as it gets hotter, the space for the shower cap to expand. And, well, we'll give it a go, see what happens. So we're going to just take this off and we're going to attach the shower cap. Uh, I'll get that set up and I'll be right back. So there we have it, folks. It's uh, our ice in a beaker with a little shower cap on. And uh, what I want to do is I just want to find the mass of this whole thing, beaker and hat and everything. And the mass is 187 grams. Remember that. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to light the Bunsen burner and we're going to set this thing off. Oh yes, I haven't turned the gas on. So now that it has boiled, and hopefully there are no holes in the little plastic bag, I want to just check what the mass of this is again. So uh, hopefully we haven't lost any. We'll put it on the scales, and it is 187 grams, exactly. So what has happened is we have not lost any of the mass. All of the mass that was within the ice is still here. Something has happened. And that thing that has happened is called conservation of mass. And what you can see in here is that there's liquid water in here, there's uh, water vapour in here that's inflated the bag, and on the inside of the bag you can actually see tiny little droplets of water have condensated onto the inside of the bag. Now condensation is the reverse process of evaporation. Now one thing, just to prove this is totally reversible, I'm now going to put this in the freezer and then we'll measure its mass once it has turned back.
to see if it still is 187 grams. So now this has been in the freezer overnight and you can see that it is frozen inside, even the little condensation bubbles have frozen on the top. You can see what, it, uh, what its mass is now and we get 187 grams. So what you can see is that though this has gone through a physical change, there's been no chemical change. The mass is the same before as it is afterwards.